This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. One of my favorite events every year is the Home Run Derby. It's basically the only thing going on right now when we all get to gather on the TV and watch the same thing together and just enjoy the beauty that is a home run. For today, we're going to dive into the 2024 Home Run Derby, let you know my top bets at FanDuel Sportsbook, where we see some value there, but also go through past winners, what we can learn from those past winners, and what that means for this year's field as well to get you ready for what should be a blast tonight. Welcome on into Covering the Spread. That is a FanDuel Research podcast. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a managing editor for FanDuel Research here to break down the 20. 2024 home run derby let you know my top bets across the event over at FanDuel Sportsbook. We're going to dive into all that here in just one second. But first, a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to the Covering the Spread podcast feed wherever you get your podcast. We're here twice this week because we'll be back again on Tuesday. Tomorrow, talking to Brandon Gadula to break down his thoughts on the Open Championship, which is coming up this week, final major of the year. That'll be up in your podcast feed tomorrow morning. So if you want to get that as it is posted, make sure you're subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcasts. If you like what you hear, leave us a five-star rating and review as well. We appreciate those of you who have done so already. The dog days are here in the coolest place to get in on the MLB action is FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Because this summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a booster of bonus daily. That's right. There is something for everyone every day all summer long. You can score bigger winnings in any inning with profit boosts, snag bonus bets for home runs every Tuesday, and even beat the heat with no sweat bets. So head over to FanDuel and start making the most of your summer. FanDuel, official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball, must be 18 plus in D.C and 21 plus in present in select states opt-in required wager requirements apply bonuses awarded as non withdrawable bonus bets or profit boost tokens restrictions apply including bonus expiration see terms and conditions at fanduel.com slash sportsbook gambling problem call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit fanduel.com slash rg in colorado dc iowa kentucky Michigan, New Jersey, North Carolina, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Illinois, Tennessee, Vermont, Virginia, and Wyoming. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text Next Step to 53342 in Arizona, 1-888-789-7777, or visit ccpg.org slash chat in Connecticut, 1-800-9 with it in Indiana, 1-800-522-4700, visit ksgamblinghealth.com in Kansas, 1-877-877. 770 stop in Louisiana. Visit MD Gambling Help at Oregon, Maryland. 1 800 Gambler.net in West Virginia. Hope is here. Visit Gambling Helpline MA.org or call 800 327 5050 for 24 7 support in Massachusetts or call 1 877 8 Hope and Y or text Hope and Y in New York. Now, before I dig in, for this year's field, do you want to give a disclaimer that typically when I'm on the show here talking about bets, I've got data behind it saying, okay, here's why I like this bet. Here's how likely it is to hit stuff like that. I don't have that for this event. It's just kind of for fun. So I'm going to treat this as a, this is my route to having entertainment for this game. And I hope that in listening, you'll treat it the same way. And just know that my knowledge base here is not going to be as good. It's going to be well-researched and we'll talk about the, the, the reasoning behind recommendations, but disclaimer, this is more for funsies than anything else uh, relative to what we typically have. Let's go through the new format for this year because they are slightly different. I do, do think it will impact some of the bets we want to make uh, later on for tonight. Slightly different rules. Uh, last year, there was a bracket where they were seated one through eight and they went head to head in the first round. Now, the first round is a free for all where the four batters with the most home runs in the first round will advance to the semifinals. After that, they will be seated for the second round based on how many home runs they hit in the first round. So the guy with the most home runs will face the batter who had the fourth most home runs, two versus three, et cetera, et cetera. That's the first change. That doesn't matter who you face in the first round. You advance if you have a top four total in terms of home runs. I think that's a better format personally. The second is that there is a limit of 40 pitches per round. So the first round is three minutes or 40 pitches. And that means they can't just speed pitch and hope for the best. That's one pitch every six seconds. So it will allow a bit of time to breathe, but it's still going to be pretty physically taxing. And I do think that that 40 pitch limit does matter 
and it could lead some unders for home run uh, totals in the first round, which we'll talk about later on. And as far as bonuses go, they get three outs rather than 30 seconds. So bit of a blend of the old and new formats, and they changed the out format uh, from the out format to the time format back in 2015. So that's going to lead to some, I think, some unders in the first round, which we'll talk about later on. As far as the park, because that does matter, we got uh, righties and lefties in this field. The home run park factor at Globe Life Park uh, for righties is 112. That's according to Baseball Zavod. It's a three-year rolling average. So above average for righties. Above average for lefties, too, at 109. Um, but it's still a tiny bit below for righties. So slight advantage for righties. Not a massive one, though. The lone strict lefty in the field is Gunnar Henderson. And then Jose Ramirez, a switch hitter. He hit as a righty back in 2022, but he had a thumb injury, which may have influenced why he hit righty. He has not decided, or he has not said at least, whether he'll bat righty or lefty, but it could go either way. I'm treating him just as like his overall numbers basically right now, uh, because I'm not really sure which way he will go. But keep that in mind that he could be either a righty or a lefty. So slight edge for righties, but not a massive, massive difference between those two. Other thing we can look at is past winners and try to identify some key trends and what we've seen from those winners. And I want to focus in specifically on the eight winners who have ha occurred since they switched the to the time format, because I think that's our most relevant sample here versus the out format that they had before. And we look at those eight winners, a couple things stand out. The first thing is that they're heavy in general. They, they have a lot of weight. The average weight of the winner in this eight-year sample has been 238 pounds. That's partly because Aaron Judge won at 282 pounds, but nobody has won the home run derby since 2015, weighing less than 210 pounds. Only half the field this year weighs uh, 210 or more than 210. Gunnar Henderson is at 210 exactly, but um, potentially red flags for Jose Ramirez, Adelis Garcia, and Bobby Witt because those guys are all below 210. So not the optimal weight as far as the home run derby. And I think this makes sense too, anecdotally, because you want that stamina, you want that muscle mass in order to maintain your strength throughout the entire event. I will say that last year I used the same angle to bet against Adelis Garcia at times, and it burned me, but we did see Vladimir Guerrero Jr. win in the end, so the weight factor did come in there towards the end. The second thing is that barrel rate has been important. The average barrel rate of a derby winner is 13.9%. Now, that's for the full season, not where they were at the All-Star break, but that is double the league average of 6.7% across that same sample. So barrel rate matters, and the highest barrel rate among batters in this field is Marcelo Zuna at 17.9%. Then you got Bobby Wood Jr. at 14.9%, Teoscar Hernandez, 14.6%, Gunnar Henderson, 14.1%, and Adelis Garcia, 13.5%. The concerning numbers here for barrel rate are Jose Ramirez, Alec Bohm, and maybe Pete Alonso. Hasn't been in the best form so far this year. Having a higher hard hit rate and a higher fly ball rate does help, but barrel rate and camp effectively encapsulates both those things. So if you're looking at two pieces of data, I would say focus on the batter's weight, and I would also look at their barrel rate because both those things do tend to matter quite a bit. Let's take a look here at the odds for this year. We'll dive into the, the winner market in a second. But I want to start things off with the first round. You can bet on a couple of things across the first round. You can bet on who will advance to the semifinals, a.k.a. Uh, finish inside the top four for the first round. You can bet on that. But you can also bet on total home runs hit during the first round. Given the new format rules, I think we should have a bias towards unders here. So we're going to go towards Alec Bohm and take him under 18 and a half home runs at even money. And again, this is in large part because we're seeing a shift in the rules this year where it's potentially going to make things a bit more similar to the years past where it was more out space versus timing and things like that. Bohm, even money to go under 18 and a half home runs. He has the right weight uh, for this event, but only an 8.3% barrel rate so far this year. Doesn't stand out with his bad at ball data either. So if we're looking at the overall profiles of each batter, Bohm, to me at least, has the weakest one. The only area where he stands out is his weight. Everything else, the bad at ball data, the results, all skewing against him. And we can buy into what I think will be a bias towards unders in the first round as a result of the new rules. And that leads us to taking Bohm under 18 and a half home runs in the first round. One of my favorite bets across the entire derby is for Bohm to go under that number. The second first round bet, and this one does feel kind of odd, 
But I want to get, bet against Pete Alonso to make the semifinal because Alonso is a favorite and he is minus 230 to advance the semifinal, which means he's plus 184 not to advance. And so, but this is kind of a, a chaotic format. It's a different format than what he's won in. And he's not in the best form right now. His barrel rate pretty far down the list. His hard hit rate is second worst in this field. And again, I think that there's going to be a lot of volatility here, potentially not as many home runs. Not as many home runs increases variance. That could work against Alonzo. And if there's more variance, betting plus 184 and a no is pretty enticing. So it is nerve-wracking to bet against Alonzo, given how good he is, given how much experience he has in this format, which does matter. But we're getting plus 184 here to compensate for that. So I'm okay taking Alonzo to not advance plus 184 to the semifinal round. The final first round bet that I want to make is going to be on Teoscar Hernandez to advance. As you'll see here, if you're watching on FanDuel TV Plus, Hernandez plus 160 to advance to the second round. And he checks a lot of key boxes for us. Uh, Hernandez has a 14.6% barrel rate, which ranks third in this field. His 47% hard hit rate ranks fourth. He weighs 215 pounds, so all good there. And I think that if we're looking at this field, I think Hernandez should be closer to even money than where he's currently sitting. He is not a perfect candidate for this type of event because he, he doesn't have the experience and things like that, but I do like a lot of what he does. So we're going to go with Teos Gar Hernandez to advance. So the three bets I like across the first round of this year's home run derby are Teos Gar Hernandez to advance at plus 160, Pete Alonso to not advance at plus 184, and then we'll take Alec Bohm under 18 and a half home runs in the first round, again, buying into the fact that I think we'll be seeing a couple fewer home runs across this format in general. Let's go now to the main event and talk about my favorite bets to win the 2024 Home Run Derby. I got two that I like, and those are going to be Marcelo Zuna plus 380 and Teoscar Hernandez at 11 to 1. Let's go through Hernandez first. Talked about him a bit before, but the data is good for him. He's got just the six best odds to win this thing at 11 to 1, and I think that's too long. I prefer him between the two bets to advance at plus 160, but 11 to 1 is fun too. So I do like Teoscar Hernandez to win this thing at 11 to 1. Marcel Ozuna, though, is basically your prototypical guy, the, the kind of batter you look for when you're looking at the home run derby because he weighs 225 pounds, so a good weight relative to past winners. He leads this field in barrel rate across the first half of the year, and he ranks second in hard hit rate. Ozuna is not the biggest fly ball guy. He's more so around average there, but he's above average for uh, derby winners and launch angle. And again, the launch angle and fly ball rate stuff did not matter as much as hard hit rate and barrel rate, which is where Ozuna really does stand out. So as we talked about before, I do think that Alonzo is a bit overvalued overall in this field. And if he's the favorite to win this thing at plus 280, that implies a lot of value elsewhere in this field. And to me, Ozuna is the guy who stands out most when we knock Alonzo down a peg. So for me, I think that it's a short number, of course, with Ozuna plus 380 to win. But I do think that there is value there based on how well his profile compares to past derby winners. So we're going to take Marcelo Zuna plus 380 to win the 2024 home run derby. That's all we got here for today uh, for this home run derby. But again, really fun event. Excited to get to watch it. Think it should be a fun one. And five bets that I feel pretty good about, despite the fact that, again, we're going more so based off of feel and instinct than anything else for this event. As a reminder, we are back once again tomorrow, breaking down the Open Championship. Brandon Gadula will be here to break down his thoughts on the field for this year. We'll talk about whether Rory McIlroy can finally get that next major, what Scotty Chef was looking like, who his favorite bets are, and much more for the Open Championship. To get that in all of our shows as they are posted, make sure you're subscribed to covering the spread wherever you get your podcast if you like what you hear leave us a five-star rating and review as well if you got any questions for me i am on x at jim Sonis. you can find fanduel research on x at fanduel research want to thank you all for tuning in for today good luck to you with your bets enjoy the home run derby we'll talk to you once again tomorrow to break down the open championship thank you all for tuning in this has been covering the spread a fan research podcast 